Uh, next up, we have Mr. Liang Zhong, who joined Pang Yuan International as the Managing Director, Head of Sovereign and Public Finance Ratings. Mr. Zhong has extensive experience and deep insights about sovereign and macro analytics that's built on 20 years of work in relevant and diversified fields. Now, before he crossed over to the private sector, uh, Mr. Zhong previously had served in the People's Bank of China for more than seven years and was seconded at the IMF for two and a half years. On the private side, Mr. Zhong was a director of sovereign and international public finance ratings at SMP APEC. Now, Mr. Zhong. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the first credit conference of Pengyuan International. My name is Zhong Liang. Uh, some of you may also know me as Robert. I'm the managing director of Pengyuan International in charge of sovereign uh, public finance ratings. Today, I'm pleased to share with you our key points of our recently published paper on China's local government financing companies, uh, local government uh, financing vehicles, which is short for LHFB. And the title of our presentation is No Common Financing Vehicles in China in 2018. Default or no default? That's the question. You can see from uh, this title that we believe the judgment of whether there will be a first case of default on LHFV public bond in China is a very tough question. And for those, uh, for those of you who are very familiar with China's policy settings, I hope, I expect you will agree that indeed it's a tough question. But we will show you how we could uh, provide our unique insights uh, for you to help you uh, to answer this question. And, uh, uh, Tony just gave us an overview, a very excellent overview about where we are, who are we, where, why, how we are different. So in the following presentations, we'll just show you we do have unique insights into China analytics. So uh, before I start my presentation, uh, the, I would uh, encourage you to participate in uh, two pollings. There are two questions. Uh, one is about the impact of a possible default on LGFV bond. The second is about uh, data requirements regarding the credit analysis of local governments and LGFVs. Your answer to those uh, two questions will help, uh, will help, uh, help us uh, better tailor our presentation and analytics in the, in the following months uh, to meet with your demands. So uh, let me uh, briefly uh, explain what these uh, questions are. The first question is, what is the frequency of LGFV default on public bonds if happened hypothetically this year could trigger sector-wide funding problem for LGFVs in your estimate? Is either one default will do the trick, or second, or two defaults will do the trick, or maybe even higher frequency, or maybe you have a different view. Maybe you believe that, okay, uh, maybe some defaults of LGFVs is, are unlikely to lead to a sector-wide funding problem. So, that's the first question. Okay, again, uh, it asks about your view on the possible impact of a, a hypothetical uh, default, LGFV default on public bonds. So just take your time. You have a 
maybe 20, 30 minutes, uh, 30 seconds to answer the first question. Wow, it's very interesting result. Uh, it appears that most of the, okay, it's still changing. The voting is still changing. Okay, uh, 30 minutes, okay. Well, uh, a while ago, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 30 minutes, 30 seconds plus. Okay, okay, let, let's stop it. Oh, but there are still voting coming in. Maybe just uh, wait another 10 minutes. Actually, I would say that, to me, this, uh, this would be a very interesting and relevant uh, question. Okay, it seems that uh, we have, uh, basically have all the answers. Well, uh, it seems that Majority of respondents uh, are not quite concerned about the systemic impact or sector-wide impact of LGFA defaults. Well, uh, I'll uh, touch on that in my uh, presentation. Okay, let's move to the second question. To assess the credit worthiness of local government and local government financing companies' vehicles, which area among the following is the one topping your wish list to have better data and information. The first one is, uh, say, uh, on the economic side. The first one candidate uh, answer is a regional gross product or uh, local GDP. The second is the budgetary performance, including uh, land premium. The third one is the debt and the liability is uh, the liquidity position of local governments. So okay, you have uh, 30, minutes, uh, 30 uh, seconds to answer the question. Okay, uh, again, uh, I would say uh, there are quite some interesting observations. Uh, it appears to me that not many people worry about the so-called local GDP, which is, uh, say, headline uh, economic number. Uh, I say it's interesting because uh, I think uh, some local governments uh, confess that the window dress their uh, local GDP number uh, by a large margin, but uh, it appears uh, it doesn't worry uh, many respects. There is a, a standing out in that uh, many people worry about, many people want to know more uh, debt. And uh, also they are e equal, uh, sort of an equal concern about uh, the budgetary performance and the liquidity uh, position. Uh, I'll uh, touch these uh, issues in the later part of my presentation. Okay. So uh, let's get back to my presentation uh, on the credit worst list of. Uh, LGFAs. Basically, th this paper will answer questions or three W's. The first one is whether. Whether there will be a case of LGFV default on 
uh, bound this year. The second is when. The when is not uh, talking about the specific timing because we already say that this uh, paper address uh, the chance of uh, default in 2018. When we talk about when in this paper, we talk about the sequence of LGFV, our focus is on the sequence of LGFV default after a bound in a series of credit events. The last question is where? Where in China will see the first uh, LGFV default on public bound happen? Uh, in which province? Or maybe even in, in which uh, uh, perfect, perfect? Uh, before I answer those uh, three questions in the presentation, I'll briefly explain what LGFVs are and highlight two aspects of macro policy settings which are most relevant to the critical analysis of LGFVs. So uh, the first section, what are LGFVs? Typically, LGFVs are limited liability companies set up by local government to invest in infrastructure and urban facilities to support urban urbanization and economic growth. Many of those projects are not for profit and indeed are not profitable if you don't count the revenue or payment from, by the local government under the so-called uh, build and transfer uh, contract or the purchase of service agreement. Naturally, uh, many people believe that the creditworthiness or debt service capability of these entities are tightly related to local government and many investors expect that the local government will support the LGFVs they controlled in one way or another. And that is just a major reason why uh, many people believe, or even the government is concerned, that local government incurred significant hidden debt through these LGFVs. Because uh, these LGFVs are, to a large extent, the policy tools by the local government. So their credit quality is, to a large extent, driven by the policies. That, that naturally leads us to scan quickly the macroeconomic uh, setting, macro policy setting of China this year. We believe, to put it in a, in a simple way, a due targets still characterize China's macro policy setting. What are these uh, two targets? One is to ensure uh, financial stability. The second is to achieve robust economic growth. Although the focus slightly shifts towards uh, the financial stability this year, as, China, as a central government launched a three-year battle against the financial risk. So what are implications for LGFVs from this macro policy setting? That leads us to our answer to the first questions we are going to address uh, in this presentation. We believe a consequence is that it's possible but not probable for us to see a first case of LGFV default on public bond this year. Why possible? No. The background is that there are some LGFVs which are quite weak. They would fail. They would default on their debts if their local government owners doesn't, don't su support them beyond what's necessary, uh, legally speaking. So uh, their life and death is basically driven by the policy choice. 
because one target of the central government is to safeguard the financial stability. And one measure to achieve this target is to tame the hidden borrowing by local governments incurred through these LGFVs. And a seven-year soft-handed approach by the central government to tame such hidden borrowing hasn't produced, hasn't delivered satisfactory result. So the central government is likely, say, to take very tough hands to allow some LGFV to default, to instill some, basically to teach investors a lesson, to instill some kind of a financial discipline, okay? So, so, so that to tame the hidden borrowing. And uh, uh, in a few weeks ago, a, a central bank official even talked about, even suggested that China should resort, uh, resort to a Detroit type of local government bankruptcy to instill the financial discipline. So, so uh, because uh, there's a possibility that the government could resort to a uh, local government default to engineer uh, to instill financial discipline, so we say that it's possible that we will see, we could see our first LGFV default on public bond this year. But why not probable? When we say not probable means uh, the chance of a default this year is less than 50%. So why not probable? Because again, even uh, the local government, LGFAs play an important role in investing in infrastructure and urban facilities, which is very important, which is quite important in support China's uh, economic growth. Because China also wants to ensure a rapid growth so as to uh, double its GDP over the decades spanning uh, 2010 to 2020. So if a default, if a LGFV default lead to a systematic, lead to a across the board funding problem for LGFVs, that could put pressure on the government to achieve the growth target. And also, if there is, if the LGFV default lead to a, a sector-wide funding problem or refinancing problem, that would also put pressure on the government in terms of safeguarding financial stability. And uh, in this regard, it's, it's worth noting that central government officials clearly recognize that they won't add to the risk of financial, financial instability by the means, by, by the measures, mean to control the, those risks. Okay, here uh, I would like to uh, go back to the answers uh, you, you, you provided uh, under the first uh, uh, question. Well, most of you, most of the respondents uh, seems not worried about uh, the uh, sector-wide implication of even uh, quite a number of LGFV defaults on public bonds. I would say that based, my, based on my understanding of China, uh, policymakers appear to have a different thinking in that respect. Actually, uh, several years ago, I attended a, a conference, government, government sponsored conference on the management of local government debt. Uh, during the coffee break, a uh, middle level Minister of Financial official was quite angry about uh, the rampant hidden borrowing by the LGFVs. And he said, well, maybe it's time for us to let some LGFAs fail. So that kind of a policy option has been in the mind of the government officials for quite a long time. And as I mentioned uh, earlier in the presentation, there are low lack of weak LGFVs which could fail or default if the government don't support them beyond the minimum, legally minimum. 
So why government didn't do that, haven't do that over a seven year period? That's because, well, although it's possible that some LGFV defaults won't trigger a, a sector-wide refinancing problem, but there is such risk. Well, currently, uh, they are, they are, the market confidence uh, seems, not, seems to be not quite well anchored. So it may be unsettled by some unprecedented event. So policymakers may appear to have some kind of a strong incentive to delay, to, to, to avoid those things to happen. So that's why it's not probable. We say it's not probable. Uh, this, this is a, a very tough question, as I said. So uh, if we say that the chance of a first FFV default on public bond is less than 50%, some of you may, be feel, may feel that, well, it's not much informative than what we can learn by tossing a coin, right? The tossing a coin, you have a 50% percent chance to get either side of the coin. But I would beg for a different uh, a judgment. I would say that our judgment is based on, I would say, uh, quite detailed or even solid analysis. So it's an it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a informed judgment call. So if you share our rationale with other people, maybe it's, it's, it's quite likely that every time you show it to different people, you'll come out with the same answer. Well, yeah, the chance is less than 50%. But if you toss a coin, many times you get different answer. So that's a critical difference. So that's why I believe in this regard, to answer such tough questions, the rationale or the reasoning maybe is more insightful or helpful for investors than just answer. So I'll get into the details of our rationale, why it's not probable. Basically, uh, we come to this conclusion based on three reasons. The first, uh, to allowing an LHF rate to default on its public bonds, which uh, hereafter I will call it to resort to a shock therapy, okay, uh, to help our uh, communication. So resort to this uh, shop therapy will only have limited effect in taming the hidden body by local government in this year because the other conditions are not fully in place to achieve this route. So if you just say, uh, for instance, if the government is able to limit all those spendings all those uh, hidden borrowings through LGFVs, the other form of hidden borrowing will pop up. The second is that, oh, I already touched a little bit. The second reason is that the shock therapy has some kind of at least tail risk to, 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 to put great pressure on the systemic financial stability. The last one is there's no urgency to resort to shock therapy in the first year of a three-year critical battle against financial risk. So why come the three years? Because central governments realize that, well, it's a tough thing. Maybe we need some time, right? So currently, the government believe that, central government believe that the overall risk posed by the total leverage, of uh, total leverage is still under control, so there's no urgency. So again, uh, just a quick recap. For the shock therapy, limited effect in taming hidden local, bar local government borrowing, uh, potentially uh, risky, contagious, and no urgency. So why not just uh, say, take a tough graduate approach instead of apply uh, shock therapy? So I'll, I'll 
quickly uh, goes through a few slides to show you why we uh, give you some uh, uh, quantitative support to our arguments. Uh, the, these two slides shows that the investment uh, in certain infrastructure and urban facilities by HVs uh, plays an important role in supporting economic growth. You can see that this uh, such investment accounted for a rising share in the increase of investment. And, well, actually, uh, the left, hand, left side uh, chart is, is uh, something really reflect our, our analytical insights. Uh, we collect uh, um, hard to find data to show that uh, this, this uh, sub sector of, uh, of uh, infrastructure investment actually is highly leveraged. Uh, actually, you can, uh, we, 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 the, the additional studies uh, based on this show that the debt to EBITDA uh, is uh, more than 30 times. So the debt borrowed uh, for, for, for some provinces. So you can see that uh, LGFV uh, engaging this uh, kind of investment is not self-supporting. That's why the government needs to support them. That's why there's a root cause of hidden debt, hidden borrowing of LGFV uh, of local government. And this slide shows that there are other channels uh, not, not in place, not in place uh, to tame. And the government's un, uh, not ready to uh, uh, un appears to, uh, unlikely to uh, accept a headline fiscal deficit much higher than 3% of GDP, and so on and so forth. So basically, just a quick recap. These rationales support our conclusion that a first case of LGFV default on public bonds is possible, but not probable to happen this year. Oh, I'll skip this. This I talk about uh, uh, the possibility of, of, uh, of an LGFV uh, default triggering system-wide uh, uh, funding problem. So uh, come to the next question. When uh, a default on LGFV off-bound, offshore bond is likely to happen in, in a sequence of credit events? We believe that while our, uh, conclusion, our judgment is that the government is not likely to uh, resort to uh, shock therapy in the first year of a three-year battle against financial risk instead of take tough gradualism. Tough gradualism means they just uh, uh, take less disruptive and potential uh, contagious uh, me measures uh, first and then tightening discipline gradually. So that will lead to, uh, say, that will give a, a lead to a, give rise to such a, a expected uh, sequence of uh, credit events. The first kind of credit events is that uh, the HFA uh, could default, may default on their bank loan or, tr or debt under trust a scheme or private bond. And then the default may move on to the uh, unsure uh, public bond. Uh, within uh, these two uh, Credit events. We, we expect that the public bonds registered with uh, NAFME, which is a uh, uh, which is a regulator uh, over over sold by the People's Bank of China, uh, may happen earlier than the default on enterprise bonds approved by the NDRC. Why in China's uh, a segmented uh, regulatory? Uh, regime over local government uh, uh, LGFV bond. Uh, the People's Bank of China tends to take a more a pro-market approach in the regulation. That's why uh, we say we expect uh, the bond approved, uh, LGFV bond uh, which is registered with NAFME may default earlier than enterprise bond uh, approved by the NDRC. And finally, the default may, if happened, we expand to the offshore market. Uh, because uh, in our estimates, the exter external stability uh, is very important for China nowadays to ensure uh, the overall uh, stability 
economic financial stability. And the other reason is that LGFV that, are, that issued optional bonds are not among the weakest in the universe of LGFVs. So moving on the last part, uh, I, I'll talk about very quickly uh, uh, of this part because actually uh, this part is, is about talk about the, the regional differentiation and how we could assess uh, the credit quality of uh, different provinces and different regions, which is by itself could be a topic of very uh, long uh, article. And basically what we say is that the provi provincial government matters for the credit quality, for the credit worthiness or likelihood of default uh, of LGFVs not limited to the direct owner of the uh, direct, uh, direct government owner of the LGFVs. And uh, as, a China, as, as a China is uh, going through an economic transformation, uh, entering a period of a so-called uh, new econo e economic norm, the economic and the fiscal performance of the provinces uh, diverged uh, significantly. So you can, you can, you, I'm not sure you, whether you can see this uh, clearly. But uh, basically, uh, this uh, uh, red, uh, we highlight an uh, unfavorable uh, measurement uh, uh, of each province uh, by uh, red and uh, by blue. You can have a quick overview that there is a significant in the economic and uh, also uh, fiscal performance of these uh, provinces. But detailed, uh, extensive and deep data mining and is necessary uh, to, accept, uh, to capture the true credit fundamentals of the uh, LGFV, uh, of the local government and LGFVs. Here I only highlight three points because um, you notice that you, you uh, notice that uh, there are some local governments window dressing their data, and also you, uh, when you answer the second question, uh, you say that you need uh, uh, more data and information in in debt and cleaning liability as well as fiscal performance. Actually, we see there are two simple rows help uh, to show you. Actually, we are doing. Uh, deep analysis in this regard. On fiscal balance, yeah, we, we know that, uh, we know uh, the measures, uh, how the local government can overstate their fiscal revenue. And uh, we, we, we calculate some kind of a broad debt measurement to better uh, capture the debt sustainability of local government. So basically, actually, what we show here is just part of the data mining we have did. Actually, we did more things than, than we show today. Uh, these two charts just give you, uh, just give you some, uh, some, some sense that we have also do a quite in-depth analysis of uh, uh, local government and prefectural level. And we're going to uh, show you those in our later publications. So basically, that concludes my presentation today. Just a, a quick summary. So uh, three key message, uh, three findings of our AR first paper on LGFVs. The first one is that China's first case of LGFV default on public bonds possible but not probable to happen this year. The second is the first Unsure LGFV default on public bonds is likely to happen before the first offshore default on public bonds. The third is the extensive and deep mining of data and information is necessary to assess credit quality of LGTs, local governments, and LGFVs. And that's where we can provide you unique insights. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for that, Robert.
Well, uh, quickly, just perhaps two questions from me before we have our coffee break. I'm not entirely sure about your wording when you say uh, the probability of default is less than 50% is probable, but possible, or did I oh, sorry. have that uh, the yeah, other sure. way? It's oh, possible. No, no. Possible, but, but not probable. Not probable. Okay. Now, um, all right, so if I quickly throw a question in your way, if uh, LGFV default does happen this year, could you quantify for us what could be the, the size of debt under default? Well, uh, a good question. And because our conclusion is that uh, for the sake of safeguarding the financial stability, uh, the government is unlikely to let many LGFV to default on their bond. So if one LGFV does default on, on its bond, the chance that the government will allow a second and or a third to happen, the chance will be even lower, much lower, right? Otherwise, if LGFV's default happen consecutively, that is very likely to create a, create a, a scenario of uh, contagion that will put great pressure on the systemic financial stability. So I, I would say that it, quite, it should be quite safe to say that the total default by LGFVs uh, this year should be less than maybe five. I think it should be quite safe, right? And uh, we checked, say, the debt of the bond of the spending by those uh, weakest LGFAs in China. And their typical debt outstanding, bond outstanding is, say, I think, uh, about um, 100, 100 million US dollar. So I would say uh, times uh, the five, it will be quite safe to say that for the onshore uh, default, the total size of, of debt uh, uh, under default, if default does happen, should be simply uh, less than 500 million US dollar. Okay, I will check your math at the year end. I'm with you, I, I follow your logic. Now, um, all right, putting my journalist head on, second question, um, sifted from, from the audience responses. If you're not queuing in your Q&As, you want to make sure you want to do it for the, for the later sessions to, days, to stay participated in our events throughout the day. Now, um, right, okay, are you ready? You sure? Okay, second question for me. There are a number of data missing from your table on local government fiscal indicators. Now, how would you address such data problem when you actually do the rating? Well, I, I would say that is a very tough one. But, you know, uh, as I said, we know China. Uh, so, actually, what we presented in, in the presentation is just a part of the extensive study we have done, right? So, when we actually do the reading, we have our own ways to fill in those data gaps. Actually, uh, Chinese local governments uh, disclose quite some information, but because there is no standard uh, practice regarding the uh, disclosure, some data are just, say, embedded in very hard to find place. So for the experienced experts, for experienced analysts who knows China well, you will know where to dig out those pieces of information. Sometimes you have to estimate with information from so, so called of indirect information to put it uh, together. That will inquire you, require you to have, say, um, solid knowledge, not just about China, but also about economics and public finance series, so on and so forth. I think our team has all those things, 
not only just the say uh, theory, but also we know China, we know where to find those pieces of information and how to put it together to form a uh, say uh, insightful picture, which will help us to fill in those data gap and capture the underlying credit strengths of LGFB and, uh, and uh, local government and LGFBs. All right, thanks for that, Robert. I would say I am a open-minded cynic, but um, if there's room for three, I'm sure there is more value add in the market from a local agency to actually to plug in the, the info gaps in the local credit rating market. Now, um, so there was the man between you and your 10-minute coffee break for this morning. Make sure you stay for the later sessions. Apparently, they have saved the, the panel discussions towards the end of the event. So we will now have a 10-minute um, coffee break. Could I just uh, urge everyone to return to the room at 10.40? That would be great. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you for your attention.